Hi friends, this is Derek from TCI, and in this video we're going to be discussing a tool called an OTDR. It's used for testing your fiber links, and in a previous video you saw me use a power source and light meter to determine if my cables were going well or not. The OTDR is an additional tool that you might purchase. I happen to have a really cheap one that I got from Amazon. So the light meter tester that I showed in the earlier video that I did measures the loss of how much light comes from one end of your fiber assembly to the other end. What an OTDR is measuring is reflection. So what it will do is it will pulse light along my fiber assembly, and if any events, bends, connectors, or dirt, or anything anywhere along this pathway reflects light backwards, it'll be able to graph that as a chart. So you'll get a nice little curve that indicates how your fiber looks and then there'll be little spikes wherever you've got a coupler or a connector or sometimes if you just got a really bad bend there'll be a spike in those locations. What do we use this tool for? Well in my line of work I don't often use this indoors. This is more of an outdoor plant kind of product. So when you're trying to diagnose what's wrong along say a kilometer maybe two kilometers of cable that you've run outside, perhaps they're in some pull boxes or manholes. Uh, in my case, uh, the last time we used this, we were running along a driveway and there were manholes every hundred feet and it went for about a mile and a half. And then you're just looking for, why am I not getting light at the other end? And eventually you'll find through this tool, it'll tell you, hey, you know, 500 meters in, there's a big reflection. And if you go walk that thing, you walk, that path, you go walk that path and you find yourself 500 meters down the line, usually you're going to see a problem right there. It's probably a bad bend, zip tie was done too tight, or somebody pulled the cable and caused a kink or something like that. When I'm working on the interior of a building, this is a less common tool to bring out. But if I've crossed, say, many riser closets. Maybe I'm going from the roof to the basement and I'm not getting light or I'm not sure I'm getting light or I just want to be absolutely certain that there's no bad bends that would give me a link light but not a good data rate. You might put this tool on there. However, uh, the dead zones or the accuracy of it might have you walking two or three different floors looking for the actual place where it's detecting some reflectance. So it's not super great for interior spaces. If you're inside of your own data cabinet, not an appropriate tool at all to use. You definitely want to use this when you're going really far distances. For that reason, the product that I purchased from Amazon is a single mode only device. You could do multi-mode, nothing wrong with doing a OTDR for multi-mode, but for the situations and whatnot in which I find it the most useful, I don't really bother with the multi-mode. I like to use single mode everywhere that I can, and then if I can just make sure with this tool that there's a nice clean pathway without a lot of reflectance events, then I'm pretty happy with the product there. <clears throat> when you purchase this tool from Amazon, you'll get the device, you'll get the cool carrying case, you'll get the power cord, you get a little carrying strap. This is actually a really nice product for the price. And one of the things that I'm particularly uh, happy with is it came with this instruction manual. And if you're very new to operating an OTDR, maybe you don't have any formal training, you're just the, you're a technology person who's been handed this and you've been asked to certify some lines or check some lines out. Maybe you are all over Google just trying to figure out how to do it. This book is very, very good for beginners. So I highly recommend if you purchase this product, go through the book, you'll get a lot out of it, more than I could probably tell you in five minutes on a video. And one of the really key things in this booklet is there is a chart here that gives you an idea of what settings to use at what distances of fiber you want to test. So if you know your fiber is 300 meters, it gives you some suggested uh, numbers to punch in to the test specifications in order to get the best results, which is really nice. Not everything you get off Amazon is gonna come with a printed manual that's as thorough as that. So that is a really excellent addition. 
Okay, so I've got the device booted up. Let's go over the most common ways that you would use it. This coupling that I've done represents a long fiber strand that I may have run in the field. I'd like to test it and make sure that this is a good product that is working right before I hand it off to the people who will be using it, the end users. So, on the top of our device is an SC connector. I've already broken apart the connector housing, so if you're familiar with these little things, I separate the connectors from those in order to have some freedom of movement so I don't have like uh, any difficult bends happening if this is crushing it down. This is in the way generally, so we're going to remove this for the duration of our test. And then all you got to do is remove the connector. Always clean this thing when you get the opportunity. Anytime you remove the cap from one of your fibers, clean your fiber, clean your test head as well. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do it repeatedly, but when you're in the field, things get dirty and dusty. All right, so let me show you how we do a very simple test with this OTDR. First thing I'm going to do is break apart my coupling that I've made here, and I'm just going to plug in via the SC connector directly into the head of the testing unit. I'm just going to connect in a 30 meter segment. So this is roughly 100 feet, give or take, on the home screen. And I'm going to initiate a test right now, just so that you can see a sample of the graph that it generates. So this test runs for approximately 15 seconds, the way I have the machine set up. Uh, different lengths of cable you will test in different fashions. And that's why having this book handy, I always keep it nearby for reference. The book is really useful for when you know the exact, not the exact, but the ballpark distance of how long your cable is, it will suggest settings to punch into the machine. So I always use that as my guide. Now I've got here my diagram and it is showing an event right here that indicates high reflectance. And then it shows even more reflectance after that. That's called the backscatter. So light that went past the connector and is receiving and going out in with the lights above my heads, etc. cetera. Uh, what will happen is there'll be a lot of scatter on this graph, and that's perfectly normal. If you know how long your cable is, you're going to want to press the down arrow on this particular unit, and it will jump to where it thinks it sees high reflectance first. And then if you press down again, it'll jump to the next event and the next event and the next event. And I have this set to read it off to me in feet where it thinks something's going on. So it says right here, 97 feet in, that there's a lot of reflectance, which given that this is a 100 foot cable, that's not surprising. So is that a useful piece of information? No, not really. So what I like to do generally is lengthen my cable. So now I've made this closer to 200 feet. And with a 200 foot segment, I can do a little bit more testing. So I'll run the test again and see if my graph looks any different. So if I look at the graph that it generated the second time, it tells me that the cord is approximately 200 feet long. And that's the first place it sees reflectance is right here at the very end. So it's not able to see this coupler. Why is that? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One is there's a threshold for generating an event on this machine, and that is 1.4 dB decibels of loss. And most connectors are only about a half decibel, so it'll shine its light right over this. There will be some reflectance, but very little, and it won't be enough to trigger the machine to show some kind of problem at this location. If you're trying to find a splice or you're trying to find a coupler, you might lower the threshold to something like 0 .4, 0 .04, something, uh, 0.4, never do math in a video. And if you can get it down low, it'll start to show little spikes in the graph and it'll flag it where you can arrow over to it on the screen and it'll tell you at what distance it thinks it sees a coupler. Most of the time, the machine skips right over those and is actually looking for some kind of problem indicator. So a good example of what that might be is uh, if you've got a cable like rolled up and a contractor was pulling on one end of it 
and they ended up making a very tight bend such as this to where like they even tried too hard and they actually caused a little bit of a problem. So now we got ourselves a cable that's being really, really pinched. Would this show? Hard to say. I'm gonna bend it manually just to try to trigger the machine to see past this and see if it notices. So I'm gonna run the test again with the back kink in it. So it says at 94 feet something is wrong. That's because I crushed this with my hand deliberately. Now the cable I've got is approximately 100 feet long, give or take. Then I have a coupler, which the thing cannot see. And then just after the coupler, I bent this on purpose. So it's telling me, even though I've got 200 feet of fiber connected in a nice line, that I should walk along my path roughly 100 feet, 94 feet, and I'm going to find something wrong. And usually that's where I find a zip tie has done something like this, or there's been some other like thing that's happened. It got cut. There's a dirty connector, etc. So for dirty connectors, you take out your cleaner. Anywhere you've got a coupler and you think the coupler might be the issue, your first order of business is always to clean the connectors on all four of these and try again. And then if you're not sure that that's you know, solving the issue, then you're going to snip this and you're going to redo the ends and maybe even just splice them physically directly to each other versus using a coupler at all. Now, if you need more resolution than that, you might want to use a launch cable. A launch cable usually comes in a small container such as this, but I'm going to open mine up just to show you the guts of this. What's inside these is a couple hundred meters of very tightly wound fiber and the purpose of this is to give you a little bit more graph distance so that you can test the near part of your fiber. If you've got it plugged directly into the machine it's not able to see this connector or even probably the first 20 meters of this cable it's gonna have a hard time seeing with high detail how much reflectance there is along the beginning of your testing cable. With a launch you get couple hundred meters of known good fiber and then it tests right so then you put your connector in that it ex artificially extends what you're testing by a hundred meters or more and then that helps you with determining okay what about this side is the connector at the very beginning good so you can do a connector uh, launch cable at the beginning and another launch cable at the end, and then your cable under test becomes the center of your graph with a large plateau in the beginning and a large plateau at the end. And then that way it's easier to isolate the section that you want to test. I don't always do this, and again, I never really bother with this when I'm indoors. I'm mostly doing this when I'm outside at uh, some sort of rural area because in my line of work, I'm not often doing this in the city. There's a whole different set of contractors for that. They don't need my help. But when I'm on like a farmland or a college campus, I'm going between buildings, etc. The launch cable helps me when I don't have a long enough segment of my own fiber that I ran myself uh, to test properly and get a graph that's meaningful. So I'll add a launch and a tail in order to get a little bit more resolution on my graph. And it gives me something to show to the higher ups or the end users to prove that the cable is good. This particular item from Amazon is a touchscreen, comes with a uh, stylus, so it's, uh, what is it, resistive? It's a resistive touchscreen. It seems to run some sort of version of Android it can connect to your PC and download the charts. However, all the software I found is in Chinese, so I don't use it a whole heck of a lot. Uh, but it works if you need to print it out. But if you really want to be serious and certify it, you need to go get like a Fluke, a Versive, a DSX used, something like that, or maybe a Lantech 4. When you're using this particular product, it's just a tool for you, the cabling guy, or the computer guy turned cabling guy, more likely, right? Where you need an affordable tool to help you locate a fault in your fiber where maybe there's a bad connector and you just can't find it. And you're not interested in rerunning the entire length of this fiber. 
However, if you're a more, uh, what is the, what am I looking for here? If you're a more commercial grade installer, maybe you work for the local power company or a telecom, this isn't up to it. You're going to want an Expo or a Versiv or something like that. So the cheap knockoffs that you get from Amazon are quite nice. It's very full featured for what it is, but it's not a certifier by any means. So keep that in mind. So I hope this has been a useful video for you. I hope you learned something. For me personally, I don't use this very often. This is an older one, by the way. I've had this for years. Uh, Amazon's got much better things now from uh, many different knockoff providers. I won't go over all their names, but there's quite a few of them. I'm just gonna power this down, save the battery. But I've been happy with this product. Thanks, little buddy. Thanks for all the good work you've done. Let's get back in. If you were wondering if you need this product, the answer is probably no. I don't think most tech people need a handheld OTDR to check their fibers out. You probably want a light source, more likely, or you want to jump all the way to a certifier and just get right to the point. Generate reports, hand it to your end users, and guarantee that that fiber is appropriate for whatever application they're using. The certifier goes an extra mile and will check off for the people that are reading the reports. It'll tell them it does 10 gigs, 25 gigs, 40 gigs, 100 gigs, 400 gigs. Or it'll tell them, no, stops at 40, won't do 100, etc. And then they can keep their records going accordingly. But you're not going to easily be able to tell that on a handheld one like this. Even if you print it out, you'd have to meticulously go over the graph in order to determine total loss along the line and whether it was appropriate for any particular application. Much too difficult to do manually. Use the certifier for that. For everything else, this is good for when you just need to know, where's the break? Did a guy with a backhoe digging in the dirt cut your line a little short? And if he dug in more than one place, well, where did he hit you? That's what this is helpful for. This is an optional tool that I don't necessarily recommend that you add to your toolbox. Far more important, light meter, microscope end face inspection, visual fault locator. Those are your three main things as a person who's hands-on, boots on the ground, you're looking for the fault yourself, and you want to have the right tools in your pouch. I don't know that this is super helpful. It's nice to have, so consider that if your budget allows for it. Again, I'm Derek from Tech Connection, and I thank you for watching this video. See you again in the next one.